New post-war Old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war Old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Careful crossing the street, Patsy. I'm watching, Nick. Hey, wait. Look at that car come. Boy, is he traveling. Why, that crazy fool. Nick, he's driving on the wrong side of the street. What's the matter with the idiot? Nick, look out. He's headed right for us. Get back, Patsy. Get behind the car. Jump. Ladies, for new speed, new ease in cleaning, try the new Pulse War Old Dutch Cleanser made with activated seismatite. See how amazingly fast it cuts grease. Thrill to the almost effortless ease activated seismatite gives new Pulse War Old Dutch. For it cleans, polishes with a smooth, gliding action that means less work, less rubbing. You'll be amazed at the miracle-like speed with which activated seismatite, found only in new post-war Old Dutch, cleans away both dirt and stains. Snowy white new post-war Old Dutch rinses away quickly when cleaning is done. So try it. Compare it. See if new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite doesn't clean in less time with less rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. At your dealers now in the same familiar package. Now for the case of the priceless pros. Today's exciting adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by a new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. Our story opens in Bancroft Hall, the ancestral home of the great 19th century man of letters, Joshua Bancroft. An elderly woman, moaning in pain, drags herself across the old-fashioned library to the telephone and dials with a trembling and uncertain hand. Operator... Operator, get me the police. Hurry. Hello. This is Julia Bancroft at Bancroft Hall. We, we've been robbed. I've been beaten. My sister, my sister Victoria, she's been killed. Hey, have you seen the afternoon paper, Patsy? Not yet, Nick. Why? It's a nasty piece of business at Bancroft Hall last night. Victoria Bancroft was murdered. Her sister, Julia, badly beaten. Oh, Nick, how horrible. They're all Joshua Bancroft's granddaughters, aren't they? Great-granddaughters. They and their brother live together at Bancroft Hall. But why would anyone want... Robbery, Patsy. The murderer stole the original manuscript of Joshua Bancroft's first book of essays. Oh, so that's it. Worth thousands of dollars. Probably just about as valuable as any of the original manuscripts of Emerson or Thoreau. Golly. Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. This is Arthur Haskell. Is Mr. Carter there, please? Well, just a moment. It's for you, Nick, and Mr. Arthur Haskell. Art Haskell? What? Hello. Hello, Nick. Art, it is you. How are you? Well, I, I must see you, Nick, today, if possible. It's important. Why, what's up? I'd uh, rather not discuss it on the telephone. Will you come to my store this evening after closing time? Why, of course. How's 8 o'clock? Good, good. I'll be looking for you. Well, that's strange. Who's Arthur Haskell? He's an old friend of my father's. I've known him since I was a kid. He owns the Haskell bookstore. Deals in rare books and old manuscripts. Nick, isn't that a funny coincidence? That he should call just when we're discussing the Bancroft robbery? Oh, I wonder whether it is a coincidence. Nick. Hello, Art. It was good of you to come. Art, let me introduce you to my secretary, Patsy Bone. Oh, how do you do, Miss Bone? I'm glad to know you, Mr. Haskell. Uh, come in, come in, both of you. Thanks. Let's go back to my office. It's in the rear of the store. I haven't forgotten, Art. Be careful, eh? It's rather dark in here. Yes. I uh, didn't want our meeting to attract too much attention. Well, that sounds mysterious, Mr. Haskell. What I have to tell you is even more mysterious. That's so? Well, here we are. 
sit down, Nick. Uh, Miss Bowen. Uh-huh. Thanks, Art. Now, what's happened? You've read in the paper, I suppose, about the theft of the Bancroft manuscript? Yes, what about it, Art? Well, you'll find this hard to believe, Nick. But yesterday, just yesterday... Oh! Oh, look out, look out. I'll pull the lamp off the desk. Dark in here now. They're outside, Nick. They're shooting through the window. If I can just sneak up to the Oh, window, Nick, I'll... don't. Stay away from there. I'm all right. If I can get a look outside. See anyone? No. Oh. Whoever it was, they're gone now. Find the light switch, Patsy. She was right by the door. Yes, here it is. Nick, I wonder whether... <gasps> oh, Nick, look. What heavens, Art. Is he? Art. Is he? Yes, Patsy. He's dead. Oh, everything's so old and musty here, Nick. Boy, I'll bet no one's even opened a window in Bancroft Hall since Joseph or Grandcroft died. Here's the library. The butler said we'd find Julia in here. Well, if you can tell us if there's a connection between Haskell and the Bancroft manuscripts. Miss Bancroft? Yes. And you're Mr. Carter and Miss Bowen. Yes. Oh, forgive me for not getting up, but my doctor says I can't move from this couch. Of course. We understand, Miss Bancroft. Uh, sit down, won't you? Thank you. I'm so glad you called. I know if anyone can find the man who killed my sister and stole great grandfather's manuscript, you can, Mr. Carter. You say the man who killed your sister. Yeah. Are you certain it was a man? Oh, positive, Mr. Carter. Oh, I see. Now, tell me, what time did the robbery take place, Miss Bancroft? It was about 10.30. I was in my room on the second floor when I heard Victoria scream. I started down the stairs, and then there was a shot. I see. And then? I rushed into the room. And just as I stepped through the arch... I was struck on the head two or three times. With what? Do you know, Miss Bancroft? Yes, yes, the base of that desk lamp over there. That's all I remember until I came to. Then I saw the safe open. The manuscript was gone and Victoria was dead. Well, let's see if... Now, just a minute. If what? What are you doing at those draperies, Mr. Carter? Just this. <gasps> Taylor! How do you do, Mr. Carter? I don't know who you are, but the next time you hide behind draperies, be sure your feet don't show. Mr. Carter, this is my brother, Taylor Bancroft. I, uh, I was just coming in to get a book. Were you? What book? Uh, what book? Why, uh... Never mind. I have one more question to ask you, Miss Bancroft. Yes? Have you any idea who could have done this? Why, anyone might have done it. So many people knew of great-grandfather's manuscripts. And nearly everyone knew that it was kept here. True enough, but no ordinary thief would steal a rare old manuscript. It was stolen by a person who knew how to dispose of it. Well, there are several people here in the city who know a great deal about old books. Do you happen to know the names of any particular individuals? Why, uh... I know who would know, Julia. Carl Van Leiden. Professor Van Leiden? Yes, yes. He's the best-known authority in the field. I'm sure he'd be glad to help you. Thank you, Miss Bancroft. I think I'll pay him a visit right now. So you think only someone who knows enough about rare books to dispose of the Bancroft manuscript would have stolen it, eh, Mr. Carter? Exactly, Professor Van Leiden. Mm -hmm. I suggested that you could give me the names of a few such people to check on. Why, yes, I think I can. If you will excuse me, I go to my study now. I'll write out a list for you. Oh, please make yourself at home. Gosh, look at all those books, Nick. Yes, Patsy, there it is. It's the famous Van Leiden Library. Thousands of books worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Why, that's a good and big Bible in that glass case there. Golly. And up here on this shelf, these are... are... That's funny. What is? You wouldn't think Professor Van Leiden would be so careless. Oh, a couple of volumes upside down, huh? Yeah. I wonder if he'd mind if I turned them right side up. I don't imagine he would. Hey, look. Hmm? Well, what is it? There's something stuck in behind these books. It looks like... Like... Well, let's see it, Patsy. Here. Great Scott, do you know what this is? What, Nick? This is what we're looking for. 
the Joshua Bancroft Manuscript. In amazement and disbelief, Nick and Patsy stare at the bulky sheaf of yellowing pages. The precious manuscript has been found, but as Nick himself realizes, this serves only to deepen the mystery of Bancroft Hall. We'll see what happens in just a minute. Next time you get a household cleanser, remember this. The first major cleanser improvement since the introduction of Old Dutch's famous cleaning ingredient, seismatite, is activated seismatite. Yes, scientists, by an exclusive new process, have activated seismatite to give new post-war Old Dutch cleanser a new fast action, new almost effortless ease, a new snow-white appearance. So get new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite and see if it doesn't clean in less time with less actual rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. New post-war Old Dutch cleanser in the same familiar package carries the good housekeeping seal of approval. And now back to the case of the priceless prose. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. As we pick up our story, a few minutes have passed since Nick and Patsy discovered the Joshua Bancroft manuscript hidden behind some books in Professor Van Leiden's library. The professor is just returning from his study. Uh, here, Mr. Carter, I have made a list of a few people you might want to talk to. Right now, Professor, you're the only person I want to talk to. Yes, Professor. We found the Bancroft manuscript. I see. And you believe that it was I who broke into Bancroft Hall, stole the manuscript, killed Victoria Bancroft, and beat up her sister? Well, didn't you? Of course I didn't. I came by the manuscript quite innocently. I was about to buy it. From whom? From a friend of yours, Arthur Haskell. Arthur Haskell? I don't believe it. It's the truth, Miss Bourne. Haskell stopped by here only day before yesterday um, uh, to let me examine it. I was about to call to arrange for the purchase when I heard that it had been stolen from Bancroft Hall the night before. Why didn't you notify the police that you had it? Well, frankly, I was frightened, Mr. Carter, particularly when I heard of Haskell's death. I realized that I had no proof of how the manuscript came into my possession. And Arthur didn't tell you how it had come into his possession? No. How much were you going to pay him for it? I was prepared to offer $73,000. Seventy-three thousand. Oh, Professor, why exactly seventy-three thousand? Well, I did considerable investigating in the matter about six weeks ago, and from the inquiries I made, I feel that seventy-three thousand is about what a keen collector would pay for the manuscript today. Why were you so interested in the Bancroft manuscript six weeks ago? I wasn't. I appraised this as a favor to Mr. Arnold Gibson. Who's Arnold Gibson? A stockbroker here in the city, an old friend of the Bancroft family, or so he said. Did he say why he wanted it appraised? No, he did not, but he seemed to feel it was very urgent. Nick, something tells me it's urgent that we see this Arnold Gibson. Right, Patsy. Professor, with your permission, I'm taking this manuscript with me. It's evidence on one or perhaps two murder cases. I understand, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Now, Patsy, you go back to the office. I'm going to pay another visit to Bancroft Hall. But what am I going to do at the office, Nick? You're going to put the manuscript in our office safe and leave it there. We're not carrying $73,000 worth of prose around in our luggage compartment. Then you found it already. Oh, Mr. Carter, that's wonderful news. Where is the manuscript now, Mr. Carter? In the safe in my office, Mr. Bancroft. I'm holding it for the police. Tell me, do you know Arnold Gibson? Arnold Gibson? Arnold's an old friend of the family, Mr. Carter. What has he to do with this? Did either of you authorize him to seek an appraisal of your great-grandfather's manuscript six weeks ago? No, certainly not. Why, you don't mean to say he... Van Leiden says Arnold Gibson asked him to determine the current market value of the manuscript. Well, that's incredible. Why would he have done such a thing? I'm sure I don't know, Miss Bancroft. There's one more thing I'd like to ask of you. The safe from which the manuscript was stolen... Behind that picture over the mantel, isn't it? Yes, the picture slide back. Um, show him, Taylor. Uh, very well, Julia. Do you see, Mr. Carter? How many people knew the combination of the safe? Just two. Victoria and myself. You don't know it, Mr. Bancroft? No, Victoria never trusted me enough to give it to me. Being the elder sister, she looked upon great-grandfather's manuscript as her personal property. Yet she told you the combination, Miss Bancroft? Yes, but only because she felt someone else should know it in, in the event anything happened to her. I see. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to pick up Miss Bowen and pay a call on Arnold Gibson. <laughs> Oh, slow 
slow down, Nick. Isn't that the park you arms up ahead where Arnold Gibson lives? Oh, yes, yes, I think it is. Uh-huh. Oh, no use turning around here. We might as well park over here. Right. Careful crossing the street, Patsy. <laughs> I'm watching. Come on. Hey, wait, Patsy, wait. What? That car coming. Boy, is he traveling. Why, that crazy fool. Nick, he's driving on the wrong side of the street. He must be drunk. Nick, look out, he's headed right for us. Get back, Patsy, behind that car, jump. Oh, oh great grief. That was close. Nick, whoever was driving that car deliberately tried to run us down. That's obvious. Did you, did you see who it was? No, I was too busy getting out of the way. Me too. Nick, I bet someone was trying to keep us from talking to Arnold Gibson. Maybe so. This makes me all the more interested in meeting the gentleman. Oh, uh, sit down, Miss Bowen, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Uh, cigarette, Mr. Carter? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, they're a special brand I have made for my customers. They're called... Uh... Arcadia's. Oh, sorry, I, I don't use them. Oh, I see. Well, uh, what can I do for you? Mr. Gibson, you can tell us why you asked Professor Van Leiden to ascertain the market price of the Bancroft manuscript. Boy, I... Uh, and uh, just what business is it of yours? Two murders make it my business, even though the manuscript has been recovered. Oh, you've got it back? I have, safely stored away in my office safe. Oh, are you going to tell me what I want to know? Uh, <clears throat> Carter, I had the Bancroft manuscript appraised because I was tired of waiting for the money Taylor Bancroft owes me. Bancroft owes you money? $55,000, sir. Oh, that's a lot of money. Taylor was playing the market. He lost, didn't have the money to cover. I advanced it for him. And you wanted to find out whether he could raise enough on the manuscript to pay you back. That's right, Mr. Carter. I see. Well, thank you, Mr. Gibson. Not at all. All right, Patsy, shall we go? Where now, Nick? I'm taking you home. I'm going over to the athletic club. The athletic club? What for? I think a good brisk rub down will do me good. And a good night's sleep, and I'll be ready for another busy day tomorrow. Take it easy. Hello. Nick. Nick, this uh, is Patsy. Oh, Patsy. Hey, what time is it? It's 9.15. I'm at the office. Something terrible has happened, Nick. Ah, uh, don't tell me. Let me guess. The Bancroft manuscript's been stolen. Yes, Nick. Someone broke it here last night. They blew the safe. Blew it, huh? You sure they blew it? Well, of course, Nick, but... Good. What, what'd you say? I said good. Now I found out what I wanted to know. Hold everything, Patsy. I'll be right down. <laughs> How can you be so calm when the Bancroft manuscript has been stolen again? Well, for one thing, it hasn't been stolen. But, uh, what? You look in the safe in my private office, that new burglar-proof one we put there, there last year, you'll see that it's still there. But, Nick, I put it in the old safe the way you told me to. Yes, I know. But after I left you last night, I came back here. I took the cover sheet of the manuscript and put it over a bundle of blank pages. What? Figured the thief would be in too big a rush to notice that he was stealing a dummy. But I put the manuscript itself in the new safe. Then... Then you expected the manuscript to be stolen. I hope it would be. Well, uh, That's why I took care to mention in front of every single suspect in the case just where it was hidden. But, Nick, why on earth? Because... Uh-oh, hell, wait a minute. What are you looking at, Nick? This ashtray by the chair here. Wasn't here when I left last night. It wasn't? And there's only been one person in the office since. The person who stole the dummy manuscript. Then this cigarette butt must have been left by that person. Ah, this butt says Arcadia on it. That's the brand Arnold Gibson offered me last night. Then it must have been... Oh, well, I'll get it. Nick Carter speaking. Oh, hello, Maddie. What? What's that? Nick, what is it? I see. Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Well, okay, Maddie, thanks for calling. What do you say, Nick? He says the case of the Bancroft manuscript is solved. Solved? The police just found Arnold Gibson dead. Oh. Where? Out on Riverside Road. Apparently, his car skidded and went over an embankment. But how did that solve the case? They also found the dummy manuscript. It was in the car with him. So that settled that. Not quite, Patsy. Hmm? What do you mean? Get your hat. But where are we going? To the morgue. I want to take a look at Arnold Gibson's body. <laughs> Our 
worry us, Nick. I don't like morgues. Uh-huh, I thought so. Well, why are you so interested in Gibson's hands and teeth, Nick? Listen, Patsy, remember when Gibson offered me a cigarette last night and I refused? Yes. Well, Gibson didn't take one either. In fact, he didn't smoke the whole time we were with him. You mean... I mean that he didn't smoke at all. There's not a sign of a nicotine stain on his teeth or fingers. Nick, he said he had those cigarettes made for his customers. He didn't say for himself. Right, Patsy. Cigarette stub in the office was just a plant to throw suspicion on Gibson. Then Gibson must have been murdered. Correct. And I know who murdered him. You do? And I've also got a pretty good idea who murdered Victoria Bancroft. Confident that he has solved the mystery, Nick turns away from the body of Arnold Gibson. We'll bring you the conclusion of today's adventure in just a minute. Ladies, the first chance you get, take home a package of new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismotite. Try it, then see if it doesn't clean in less time with less rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. Actually, you'll thrill to the new, almost effortless ease in cleaning with new post-war Old Dutch. Thanks to activated seismotite, it cleans, polishes with a smooth, gliding action that means less work, less rubbing. Notice the new miracle-like speed with which activated seismatite cuts grease and cleans away dirt and stains in both hard and soft water. Yes, a new post-war Old Dutch is now snowy white. Rinses away quickly when cleaning is done. It's utterly different, so try it. Compare it. Get new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite for faster, easier cleaning. Now for the conclusion of the case of the priceless pros. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. After leaving the morgue, Nick and Patsy speed swiftly across town and stand now at the door of the old mansion known as Bancroft Hall. Ring the doorbell again, Patsy. I think I hear someone coming. Oh, good evening, Mr. Carter. Good evening, Miss Bancroft. Your brother at home? Taylor? Why, yes, he's in the library. Won't you step in? Thank you. Taylor? Yes, Julia? Uh, did you want to see me? I want to see you, Bancroft. Oh, of course. Uh, what about? About murder. Mr. Carter, you, you aren't accusing Taylor. I'm accusing him of the murder of Arthur Haskell and Arnold Gibson. But that's fantastic. Is it? From the look on your brother's face, I'd say he doesn't agree with you. Bancroft, you made your big mistake when you blew my safe and left that cigarette stub in my office to frame Gibson. Did I, Carter? You did. Because Gibson had those cigarettes made for his customers. And of all the people involved in this case, you were the only one who was a customer of his. You're wrong, Carter. My mistake was in not running you and Miss Bowen down in front of Gibson's apartment. Nick. But I can undo that mistake right now. Oh, Taylor, put away that pistol. Well, I didn't think you'd crack so easily, Bancroft. Sit down on that couch, Carter. You too, Miss Bowen. Very well. You realize, of course, you can't go on killing people indefinitely. I've killed three people, Mr. Carter. A couple more will make little difference. Three? I didn't accuse you of killing three, Bancroft. Well, I did, nonetheless. You... you killed Victoria Taylor? Yes, Julia. I killed her. She came into the library just as I was opening the safe to get the manuscript. Then you came in, and I struck you. And you had to kill Haskell to keep him from telling me from whom he brought the manuscript. And last night, after you stole the manuscript from my office, you met Gibson and gave him the manuscript in place of the money you owed him. After he gave you a receipt for it, you slugged him and wrecked his car to make it look as if he'd been killed in an accident. Right, on all counts, Carter. Now, if you'll excuse me... I'm afraid I can't excuse you yet, Bancroft. Nick. Put down that sofa, fellow. Sorry. It hit the gun. You ruined his aim. Get his gun, Patsy. I got it. Good. Oh. Oh, Oh, Taylor. Are you hurt? Just a minute, Miss Bancroft. Oh. I'm going to ask your brother to do me a favor. What do you mean, Carter? Open that safe above the mantel, just the way you say you did at the night of the robbery. Go on, open it. I... I can't, Carter. Why not? I don't know the combination. That's what I thought. It was you who killed Haskell and Gibson, all right, but you didn't steal the manuscript from this safe. Well, then... Then who did, Mr. Carter? Who did? Yes. Why you, Miss Bancroft. <gasps> and it was you who murdered your sister, Victoria. <laughs> Okay, Maddie, thanks for calling. Well, Patsy, that's that. Julia Bancroft just dictated the statement. She confessed that she killed Victoria? Yep, pretty much the way I figured it. Huh? 
She stole the manuscript, then took it down and sold it to Art Haskell. Uh Uh-huh. The next day, when Victoria accidentally discovered that it was gone, she was furious, of course. She accused Julia of taking it. There was a fight. In a fit of temper, Victoria struck Julia with the lamp face. Hmm. And Julia, in turn, shot and killed Victoria. And framed the whole story of the robbery? Right. But why did Julia take it, Nick? It was Taylor who was in debt to Gibson. True enough, Patsy. But what Gibson didn't know was that Julia was the one who'd prodded Taylor into playing the market. Oh, I see. In fact, I see everything except how you figured out it was Julia. Well, I got my first clue to that when the old safe here in our office was blown open. Well, what did that prove, Nick? It proved that the killer wasn't a safe cracker, a professional thief. Uh, if he'd opened the safe in Bancroft Hall just by his sense of touch, he'd certainly have done the same thing here. Oh, but he didn't. He used an explosive. Precisely. And that told me that the person who took the manuscript out of the Bancroft safe must have known the combination. I get it. Then I got to thinking about Art Haskell's last words just before he died. Remember what they were, Patsy? Why, yes, he said yesterday, Nick. Just yesterday. Right. Well, it seemed logical that what he was going to say was yesterday, Nick. Just yesterday, I bought the Bancroft manuscript. In other words, the thing that was worrying him that made him call you was that he actually had the manuscript before the papers announced it was stolen. Exactly. When I realized that, I knew that either Julia or Taylor had sold it to him. And Julia was the only one, besides Victoria herself, who knew the combination. Yes, but I didn't rely on their words. That's why I ordered Taylor to open the safe. And when he couldn't do it, I knew he was covering for his sister. So Julia had to be guilty. Uh, I see it all now, Nick. Well, that's the end of Bancroft Hall. And of the Bancroft line, too. Of the line, maybe, Patsy. But Americans will still be reading old Joshua's essays long after the crimes of his great-grandchildren are forgotten. Friends, this is Nick Carter again, asking you all to help in the great campaign to stamp out tuberculosis. You can help rid our country of this dreaded killer by purchasing all the Christmas seals you can buy. Buy some more Christmas seals tomorrow. Will you? I'm sure the answer to that question, Nick, is a great big yes. But now, what can you tell us about the adventure that new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to bring us next week? Next week's story, Bob, concerns a man who went driving with his fiancée... And drove right into murder. There was also some blackmail. Yes, and I might mention that room on the top floor with a sealed window. And that room in the cellar without a window. Gee, that really sounds intriguing. Uh, what do you call this story? I call it The Case of the Policymakers. Attention, homemakers. Now you don't need a mixing bowl to color margarine. The sensational new Delrich Easy Color Pack Margarine ends mixing bowl mess. With Delrich, the margarine and color berry are both inside a sealed plastic bag. You simply pinch the berry, then gently knead the bag. And Delrich quickly blends to a luscious golden color inside the bag. And listen, the delicious country sweet flavor and freshness of Delrich are sealed in. It's truly America's finest margarine. Ask for the new Delrich Easy Color Pack margarine tomorrow. Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented each week at this time, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Ken Pettis and Lou Schofield. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.